I've been working on quantum safe cryptography for over a decade before NIST announced their competition in 2016. But back then it wasn't even called quantum safe cryptography. It was either lattice cryptography, code based cryptography, multivariate cryptography, and not many people were working on it. But in around 2016, NIST realized that quantum computers are soon going to be powerful enough to break today's cryptography. So all of a sudden, these niche areas became a lot more practical, and it was quite exciting. Quantum computers are drastically different with respect to classical computers. They are based on quantum information theory, they use qubit, and they can tackle problems that we could not tackle with classical computers. We do not know when we will have a quantum computer powerful enough to break today cryptographic schemes exactly. Exposing all our most sensitive data like health records, bank records, or even forging digital signature. It could be to the end of this decade. We didn't think about winning the competition. It was more like that we just wanted to design schemes that we are personally very happy with. And two years ago, in 2022, NIST selected all our schemes as the future standards. And these schemes are MLChem, which was formerly called Kyber and is an encryption scheme. And then two signature schemes, MLDSA and FNDSA, formerly known as uh, Lithium and Falcon. The fourth scheme is SLHDSA, uh, which was formerly called Sphinx Plus and which was co-designed by Ward, who joined IBM during the competition. Winning the NIST competition was a huge success, but this is not where we stopped. The next big challenge is to make the entire world quantum safe. And this is why we're working very closely with organizations to help them to understand the quantum threat to their business and also plan for actions to transform their IT environments, products and services to quantum safety in an efficient manner. We're inventing lots of technologies to discover cryptography, to migrate cryptography, and also exchange information about cryptographic bills of materials or CBOM. So in fact, a couple of years ago, we prototyped a tape drive using early versions of the MLCAM and DSA algorithms. Now that the standards are complete, we're updating that firmware with the latest versions so that we're ready to support quantum safe encryption and future tape products. Why the rush? Well, tape is actually used extensively for archiving full data by hyperscalers like Microsoft and OVH, but many other companies as well, some of whom keep data on tape for a decade or more. Quantum safe is much more than this lab today. We are collaborating across IBM to create the future of quantum safe technology. But everything all started here in this lab. I cannot stress enough the importance of uh, companies, uh, organizations, to evaluate the quantum risks today and start to put together plans uh, to migrate to a quantum safe future. Industry, industry consortia, they have to start to work together to accelerate plans for this migration. As well as uh, policy makers, they have to mandate regulation and uh, times to enable this migration. All together, we want to create a quantum safe future for information technology and our world. By the way, research doesn't stop. We are already working on the future of IBM quantum safe cryptography. The new standards are, of course, not the end of the story. We're still working to improve quantum safe cryptography. And NIST is also holding a second competition to uh, standardize additional signature schemes. And uh, we have submitted oil and vinegar and mayo. And ski sign. You know, NIST is doing this to expand the array of available signatures. We need these for different applications. Some may call for faster signatures, some may call for uh, smaller signatures. Research must go on because we need to uh, make these trade-offs available to uh, enable even more advanced cryptography. Mm -hmm.